Hi everyone, in this video I'm just going to quickly take you through the process that I used to draw or to colour this reptile eye using alcohol markers. So specifically I'm using the touch new markers in this one. And for those of you who saw the last video I posted, it was actually a review of these markers. And I finished the video just by showing me colouring this reptile eye really quickly. So I just wanted to slow that down a little bit and actually talk about the process a bit more on this. So obviously I already had my sketch drawn out and uh, I'd already done my line art for this as well so that I could get straight into recording the markers themselves. So I decided to actually start by colouring the eye first and I went in with a really pale yellow. In this case it was a 38 pale yellow in the touch new markers. I will try and give the numbers and names of what I've used for those of you who do have touch new markers but I'll write them in the description box below as well. So I started with a palish yellow and then I've gone the next yellow up, which for me was 45 canary yellow, just so that I can get a smooth blend between these. So the pale yellow I just did in the top left corner so that it looked a little bit more like a highlight in the eye. To be honest, it wasn't quite pale enough, so I do go over it a little bit shortly. I also went in with a number 23 orange marker, just going around the very edges of the eye and having my yellow marker at hand for this, I kept doing bit by bit, I would put some orange on around the edges and whilst the marker ink was still wet on the page, I would get the yellow and in a circular motion try and blend those together. Now I'm not amazing with markers or anything, so this was still a bit of practice for me. And you can see some areas blended a lot better than others. And I just used the orange all the way around the edge of the eye and also around the edge of the pupil. Because that yellow area didn't stay quite as pale as I was hoping, I actually go back in with a zero colourless blender which is basically just the alcohol ink and I'm just using this to basically move some of the ink that I'd put on there so almost like removing it a little bit, it's actually just spreading it it does work a little bit but we'll do some more things with that later because it's not quite as much as I was hoping for the centre of the eye I'm using 120 black and I'm blocking it in but I'm just going to leave one area of the page visible because I'm going to use this as a highlight and taking the 147 pale lilac colour, I'm going to round that highlight and to give it a better blend so it's not just a hard edge, I'm using my colourless blender just to soften the edges whilst it's still wet. Moving on to the scales, instead of just blocking in the full area with green, I've tried to also mix in a bit of orange to use it as a reflection light. So when I'm blocking in these green areas, I'm leaving the very edge of these scales towards the eye without any colour on. And I'm doing this just so that I can add in the orange and blend it with that green. You probably could just fill it with green and then add the orange over the top but I don't think it would work quite as well and it would cause a few separation issues. And because the light is coming from above the eye, even a little bit to the left, this area that we are doing here is all going to be quite a dark green because it's all going to be in shadow. So the orange light is actually just coming off the eye itself, giving the impression almost of a glowing eye. So once we've done that we're going to move to the top of the eyelid and we're going to start marking in some scales. So because the lighting is hitting this area, we're going to use a lighter green. So the dark green I used before was a number 43 deep olive green. The middle tone green is 175 lime green. And the palest green was a number 163 green. What I'm trying to do here is use the palest green on the scales in the top left of the page where the light is hitting them. I'm using my mid tone green just around the edges of the scale on the sort of lower right hand side just to give it a bit more of a 3D effect and stop it from looking completely flat and all just one colour. As the scales are wrapping around the eyelid, I'm trying to darken them as they're getting further away from the light and also as the plane is actually turning away from the light as well. So I'm using the same technique but instead of colouring them all with the lightest tone and then adding the mid tone for shadow, I'm starting to actually colour them with the middle tone and use the darker tone from earlier on the edges. Some of them you can actually see I'm using the lightest tone in the top left of each scale as if there's still a little bit of lighting catching those corners. Dropping underneath the eye now, this plane is obviously out of the lighting so it's facing away from it so I'm going in with my darks. I do try to add a little bit of reflection light but I think I end up colouring over that and maybe adding it in with pencil later. So there is a crease underneath this eye and I'm trying to darken it as it gets closer to this crease so you might notice me layer it bit by bit throughout the video just to try and darken it. And on the actual eyelid, this bit would be facing up at the lighting again, just like the bit above the eye. So going back in with the lighter green, not forgetting that orange glow coming off the eye. On the edges, I'm just trying to blend this green with the darker green we used earlier, just so it's not a completely sharp edge. So that just gives a slightly curved impression within the form. And even further below that eyelid, we've got a bit of a wrinkle or a bit of a crease 
which is coming a little bit out of the shadow again. So this bit is going to be a slightly lighter green again, but there is still a crease at the top where there is a little bit of shadow. So I'm trying to use a bit of a gradient really, so it doesn't just go from dark to light straight away, but it has a smoother transition. And before I forget, the paper I'm using is the Strathmore Bristol Board Vellum A5 Journal. And the fine liner I used off camera was the fine Sharpie marker, although it can smudge a little bit. I'm just going over and refining bits now, so I'm going back around the eye, this time using a 5 Cherry Red, just to deepen the colour a little bit. It does mean I have to go back in with some of my oranges and yellows to give it a bit of a blend though. And it did get a little bit messy doing this, because there was quite a lot of ink on the page. But I'm showing a photo on screen now just to show what it looked like at this point with just markers because I was actually really pleased with the way this turned out. But I wanted to refine it a little bit more so I go in with some pencil colours and the pencil colours that I use are Faber-Castell Polychromos. I'm actually going over the orange reflection light, I'm just going back in with a yellow and an orange, swapping between the two. But it's quite subtle this bit because I actually did quite a good job at getting this orange glow with the markers. And once I was happy with that, I'm going in with a white now just to touch the very edge of those scales and this is just going to act as a little bit of bounce light and it just refines the shape a little bit in that shadowed area. A paler green would have been better but I didn't have pale green pencil colour and it's only quite subtle anyway so it's not a big deal. Just refines the shape a little bit. I moved on to a darker red. I made sure I had quite a fine point with this pencil colour this time and I tried to draw in loads of really thin veins. Now at first while I was doing this I was actually a little bit worried that I'd gone a bit over the top and ruined it with this but as I got more of them in I was happier with the way it looked. I'm trying to get more of these around the centre of the eye and coming from the edges but leaving it blank where the highlight is to give that glossy finish. And I did have a reference loaded up for this, mine wasn't exactly the same but it still helped. Going in now around those edges uh, with a red and a black just to deepen that colour and up the contrast a little bit. I wouldn't normally advise shading with black as it can give quite a mucky look. However, I didn't have a darker red so I didn't have much choice but I only went in quite lightly. And I do the same thing at that crease underneath the eyelid just to darken that a little bit more because that dark green I used with the marker was the darkest green I had. So yeah, just deepening anywhere in shadow with a little bit of black, make it look a little bit more 3D. And to finish it off, I'm just going over that highlight again just with a little bit more white pencil. Quite subtle, but I like the look it gave, and I'm happy with that. So that's it finished. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know what other videos you guys want to see in the future. Be sure to leave a comment below, and like and share the video with your friends, and make sure you subscribe for more content.